Um, the next one is called Cat's Poor Nebula, um, Scorpius. Um, and um, for this one we came up uh, because of uh, cats either tamed or wild. Um, we, we actually uh, used uh, footage which um, shows cats uh, presumably after they've had a, a good feast. So they're also in the hum hunting mode but they're in the more sleepy mode and that was something which was again suggested directly by the music. Um, we thought, uh, think this is a very good match of uh, sound and image and therefore we came up with the, um, the two word description of this one, soporific contentment. Yes. Soporific as in sleepy and contentment as in well fed. So we, we developed the cat's paw uh, nebula and the cat's paw, the cat association by, very literally here, very directly. So yeah, actually could you just talk a bit about the, the, what the cat's paw nebula looks like? Um, uh, through the telescope, because it is an amazing image, isn't it? It is, yes. In fact, um, it really does look like a cat's paw, doesn't it? It's like a cat put his paw into the sky. And, and it's not just the shapes that the, yeah, the, the, what we are, st stars or you know lights that we well, see it, in the sky make. It actually the colours that yeah. come across in the image. Yeah, so like literally look like like my cat. They could be a cat's paw. Gingery, sort of reddish yellow. Right. Yes. Um, and yes, it, it's it's a nebula. It's, it's like gas. I think it's a place where stars are being born. So it's, it's a coloured thing. It's not like a, a cl um, cluster of stars like Praesepi or Pleiades. It's actually sort of lots of gas which is coloured often by the photographers. <laughs> if you went into space and you got near to it, it probably okay, wouldn't yes. be those so It's partly artist impression. Yeah. Yes. Um, but I mean, you, the, there's only a few things to say really here because any composer, however unconventional they are, um, like maybe myself, would never follow something like the Virgo and the Bertie's empty quarter with something of similar intensity. Mm. So this is like, you called it an interlude. Almost an interlude interface. after the Virgo <coughs> of the experience. Of contentment. Right. Any, nobody who knows me for more than five minutes knows I'm not mad about cats anyway. So And so am I, and of so, course so many. So it was a very... <laughs> Very simple. So many of any viewers today or uh, people everywhere are cat lovers. So it's like an intermezzo interlude between. Yes. Uh, and it's shorter. It is shorter. actually maybe around well, three minutes this three one. Minutes, yeah. And. Um, in this performance. But in its own way, equally intense. Intense, and but not. We, we start off um, because of the, the music, it's suggested to me not a, a domestic cat, but um, either a lion or a tiger. And we have a fully mature lion, um, not roaring, but having a big yawn at the beginning of this sequence. And it coincides um, with a really bassy, contrabassoon um, tu tuba sound. That timbre, that combination, well, which creates right. that timbre, matches that absolutely perfectly. <laughs> um, and one of the things we did, of course, I, I was using the iMovie um, uh, video editing uh, application for this project. Um, and we, we, we tried to explore as many of the features as we could in it. And well, one of the main aspects of doing something like successfully is pinpoint timing. Mm -hmm. And so the effect that we just described was, was effectively one which carried through every single video, every single piece of music which we wanted to match with a particular visual um, uh, parallel, mm -hmm. if you like, um, demands pinpoint timing mm -hmm. for it to get that full effect. Mm -hmm. So if you just imagine, I mean, I mean the, um, the sight of a of a lion yawning has a certain arc to it, mm -hmm. <laughs> in a ge very general sense, up and down mm -hmm. in terms of the way that its, its gesture yeah. moves. And again, that, that's something which, I mean, the music was suggesting, hence the mm -hmm. image, but you've got to time that so that it literally follows that exactly. contour. Yeah. The I contour of the music and the visual contour. Wrong, you know. And again, that, that's the essence, I think, I mean, in the entire cycle, what I just described, mm -hmm. that applies to every single marrying. There's a humour in this one too, though, of course. Because you have this huge lion at the beginning yawning and this big sound, and at the end you've got these two, maybe domestic but small cats yawning mm. one after the other. It's like yawning is infectious even in humans, but it seems to be the same yes. in cats. Yeah. And this comes at the end, like so you go from the lion to the two domestic cats yawning. So it's all yes. about some sleepiness and yes. you know, mm. relaxed almost. And I think you mentioned that the. The viola part is the simplest of all the pieces. And it, it is. Even lies it's as effective as position. all the other uh, pieces. Mm -hmm. And I say, I, mean, I regard all of these pieces as equals in terms of uh, music. 
Um, so in terms of the actual level of expression and the intensity, there isn't any difference there. But from a technical point of view, I mean, it was shorter, which is not the overriding reason, but um, it's mainly like, I think it all lined with the first position on the viola. I was using pretty much standard arco, bowed, um, detaché, slurred, legato articulation for almost all of it with a few pizzicato. And so compared with the other movements, which did involve the regular use of a lot more extended techniques. And microtones, I think this and, one is more semitonal. I think that's correct as well. And I think maybe this one is all, if not entirely, almost, um, almost entirely semitonal. Mm -hmm. um, whereas a lot of the other movements is, as Marcus has just said, uh, quarter tonal, mm -hmm. microtonal, but using quarter tones, which is something we haven't actually mentioned yet. No, but so, so, but in the, in the first uh, four movements, for example, there are a, a few examples of the use of quarter tones, mm -hmm. which is part of the style of the compositional process here. Um, but, but not in this one. But, that, but instead of that, what this does have, have is a lot of slides, which in, in musical terminology we describe as portamentos, or glissandi, yeah. um, which again, um, it's in terms of, sort of laziness. marrying with the theme, the the cats, uh, cat stretching, the cat stretching, cat and yawns. in this case they're not they're not on the hunting part of their cycle, no. they're they're in the bit in between. Well, <laughs> there is a kitten that sort of looks a bit lost in his. So yes, yeah, so yes, yeah, so not to forget the kitten, which happens maybe not exactly in the middle of this, Towards but certainly end. in between the lion and the two domestic, domesticized cats at the end. There's a kitten which finds itself on its own hopping around a field of long grass. Um, presumably it, it is looking for something, <laughs> something of interest, which is usually something um, and, and, which might... Uh, and not all of them include the constellation, but there are a couple of moments where scorpion appears, isn't there? We it? do have two, I think it's two images of the scorpion. Very desultory, not very... Uh, not moving images, but yes, that's right. Uh, one, that? of, one of them which is very effective is at the beginning where it's actually um, superimposed upon the um, image of me performing the viola mm -hmm. uh, in my recorded, um, let's say, video. Uh, I recorded this um, actually at my place of work in a teaching room and um, uh, it's impossible to really describe um, the look of that right now, but I, I try to make it um, resemble somewhat um, the cockpit of a spaceship mm -hmm. because there are windows uh, behind me when I'm making this recording with daylight coming through and um, just, just very, uh, various other features which make a very symmetrical looking um, stage set, if you like. And so we use that to great effect with me centred, in this case with, a, with, um, with the image of a scorpion um, appearing as it were behind me, um, and we use that technique a few times in, in other pieces. In some Before we others. talk about the next one, it has to be said that all of these videos were built around your recording of the whole piece. Yes, the so, basic so foundations. So you're in it in every video. Playing, yes, a constant throughout this is yes is the solo viola, um, but we used our what's known as Ken Burns effect a lot. So, i.e., you can zoom in zoom and in zoom in out. And to, in this case, myself performing. And it's amazing how many variations you can get with that. Just one, one person in one room from one camera angle, yeah. uh, playing around with the features on even something like iMovie, which is sophisticated, but not a fully professional application. Um, it's very impressive. And we had a lot of fun, also satisfaction, yeah, uh, using these features. Yeah. So, so that was number four.